I'm Mrs. Lane. My daughter Patty is Dr. Fenneman's patient. Oh, yes. Uh, Dr. Morgan will be with you in a moment. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Would you relax and stop worrying? I'm not worried, Mom. I'm just embarrassed. Having your tonsils out at my age. The kids at school will think I'm some kind of nut. Oh. It's just embarrassing. For goodness sake, Patty. <sighs> Besides, if I take time out from school, my work will suffer. You can make it up. How can you make up missing a class dance? <laughs> Mom, can I have them out later when it's more convenient? Like when? During finals would be more convenient. <laughs> Besides, there's nothing wrong with me. I just have a silly sore throat. Would Dr. Fenneman send you to a surgeon if it was just a little sore throat? It's tonsillitis. Mom, you're making a big deal over nothing. It hardly hurts at all. Mrs. Lane? <laughs> How do you feel? Patty. Patty Lane. How's your throat? Oh. Oh, it's awful. <gasps> Simply excruciating. <coughs> Maybe you better go inside and I'll take a look at it. Thank you. <coughs> Don't be alarmed. Through these portals pass some of the greatest actresses in the world. Excuse me. Meet Kathy, who lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins all the way One pair of matching bookends Different as night and day Where Kathy adores a minuet the ballet ruse and crepe Suzette. Our patty loves her rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still the cousins. Identical cousins than you find. They laugh alike, they walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. I get the feeling you're not too thrilled about having your tonsils removed. <sighs> Whatever gave you that idea? And Dr. Finneman told me about you. Oh, well, he didn't tell me about you. Well, why don't you sit down and we'll take a look. Aside from your throat, have you had any other symptoms? Uh, hot and cold and a little dizzy. Well, when did that start? A couple of minutes ago. You can sit back and relax. All right, open up and say, ah. Ah. Well, I'm not crazy about what I see. I am. <laughs> You can close your mouth now. How old are you, Patty? You mean uh, chronologically? Well. Uh, actually, I could have gone to college this year, but my parents didn't want to push me. Uh, most people think I'm a lot older than I look. <laughs> okay, I'll put down she's older than she looks. <laughs> Very sweet. Yeah. My, that's an interesting frame. Is that a relative? It's my sister. Oh. It's funny, you, most men have pictures of their wives in their offices. Only if they're married. Oh. Well, I might as well give you the bad news, Patty. You're gonna have to have your tonsils out. Oh, that's terrible. The question is when. How about tonight? I'm not doing a thing. No, Friday is the first time I can take care of it. It's a date. Yeah. I'll check you into the hospital on Thursday so we can prepare you. In the meantime, I want you to take these pills three times a day. They'll reduce infection. Well, I guess that's about it. I'll see you at the hospital. I'll be looking forward to it. I'd like to thank you very much, Doctor. You've been very kind and very considerate. And I want you to know I feel very safe being in your hands. May I ask you a personal question? Oh, yes. Is that something new? A jacket that buttons down the back. I'll talk to the nurse about checking you in the hospital. 
These came from the boatyard, Doctor. Is this the boat you're thinking of buying? What do you think of her? She's cute. Cute? I think she's a beauty. Isn't she kind of small? She's as trim as they come. Great lines. That's what I've always dreamt of. I couldn't believe my ears. He said I was a beauty, trim with great lines. Patty, are you sure you didn't misunderstand? How could I? Mom was the only other person in the office. Still, don't you think you're going a little overboard with all of that? You don't think I'm going to wear my crummy kid stuff to the hospital, do you? What does he look like? Kathy, you'll absolutely flip when you see him. He's tall, with kind of streaky blonde hair and way out eyes that kind of Look at you. You know what he looks like? Have you ever seen Troy Donahue? Yes. Well, he's even better looking than that. <laughs> Boy, am I glad I got an A in first aid. How we doing, hon? It balances. Got lucky, huh? <laughs> What's all this? Bed jacket, negligee, and a nightgown. This stuff costs more than the operation. Well, I think Patty's got a little crush on the doctor. I thought I'd indulge her. Pretty good indulgence. <laughs> hey, um, how's this Dr. Morgan seem to you, anyway? Dreamy. But, I mean, does he seem to know his business? Well, Patty and I were both very impressed with him. Well, I guess he does know his business. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Dr. Morgan. <laughs> Come in. Well, I knocked, didn't I? Get up. You're going to drip all over my new nightgown. Why don't you drip downstairs? Not me. I stay clear of doctors. Doctors? What doctor? Dr. Dreamy. He just called and said he was coming over. Why? Probably wants to collect his bill in advance. <laughs> Kathy, do you suppose he's coming over to see me? I doubt it. Well, you really are a doubting Thomas. You know, if everybody had your attitude, nobody'd believe in love at first sight. Thanks for dropping these off, Doctor. Yeah, it certainly was nice of you. I'd have been happy to come by and pick them up. Oh, it's all right. It's important that she get started on those tonight. And she forgot them. Someday Patty will forget her head. Well, that's understandable. She's a little overexcited about the whole thing. Yes. I'm afraid our Patty has a slight tendency to overdramatize. Dr. Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Hello, Patty. Have you met my mother? Uh, yes, we met this afternoon in the office. Oh, uh, and my father? Yes, we met. Oh. <clears throat> uh, oh, that's my cousin Kathy. Hello, Kathy. How do you do, Dr. Dreamy? <laughs> Dr. Morgan? You forgot the pills I gave you this afternoon. That's why I came by. Oh. Well, I'd like to thank you for looking after my welfare. Mother, have you offered our guests some refreshments? No, I haven't. Coffee, tea, or milk? I'd love some coffee. Good, I'll go make some. Oh, don't bother, Mother. You know how I love to fuss around the kitchen. You do. <laughs> and it'll give all of you a chance to get better acquainted. Excuse me. Kathy, would you mind giving me a hand in the kitchen? Well, uh, why don't we sit down and make ourselves comfortable? <laughs> Hey, right? Isn't he something else? He really is. Kathy, I'm so excited I could scream. Patty, the only problem is, apparently he's just come over to drop off the pills. Are you kidding? Don't you see? That was just an excuse. Come on, we better make the coffee. How do you like her? She's a beautiful model. Yeah, it's a model of a boat I used to race on. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Maybe you could give me your opinion. I was thinking of buying this sloop. A beauty? Well, I can understand why you were carried away. I saw her just once and I couldn't forget her. <laughs> Everything all right, girls? Yeah, everything's fine. Well, what do you say, Kathy? <sighs> Pat, you're the luckiest girl alive. I know. Oh, boy. I hope that's not Richard. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Lane. 
Oh, hello, Richard. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Dr. Morgan, uh, this is Richard, a friend of Patty's. Hello, Richard. Hi. Hi, Richard. Uh, where's Patty, Mrs. Lane? Oh, in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know what's taking so long with the coffee. I hope you're not in a hurry. I can stay as long as the dishes hold out. <laughs> After major surgery, you don't go to a dance. Oh, why not? You're not going to dance with your throat. All you got to do is keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Richard, you really don't know much about medicine, do you? After this kind of a thing, the whole body is in a, in a state of shock. Okay. I'm not going to the dance either. Why not? I don't mind if you take somebody else. I'm not interested in taking anybody else but you. Richard, there's something I have to tell you. Yeah? You've heard of puppy love. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's very sweet and very romantic. But like everything else, one day the puppy grows up. Do you understand? Hey, that's great! Well, where is it? What? Uh, the puppy they gave you because you're going into the hospital. <laughs> Richard, you saw Dr. Morgan, didn't you? Sure, in there. Right. Now, I only just met him. But sometimes when two people meet, zap, it happens. It's a matter of chemistry. Do you know what I mean? He's a chemist? I thought he was a doctor. I think you'd better stop beating around the bush. <laughs> Richard, in the short time I've known Dr. Morgan, I've grown very fond of him. And it certainly seems vice versa. That guy in there? You're kidding. He's a very distinguished surgeon. He's an old man is what he is. <laughs> Of course you're hurt now, but one day you'll get over it and you'll realize that this whole thing is bigger than both of us. And in the meantime, you've got to do me one favor. What? Go home. <laughs> Too beautiful to be true. You heard what? That's ridiculous. Where did you hear that the doctor and I were going steady? It's all over school? Well, for your information, Roz, Dr. Morgan and I are just good friends, and the rumor you heard is absolutely, well, it's absolutely premature. <laughs> right. Goodbye. What'd she say? I'm not sure. I think she denied it. But then again, she didn't. Uh-huh. That's just what all the other girls said. I think a girl should finish her education first. Roz, how would you like to make a little sick call? On Patty? Right. And if she's not sick now, I think she will be. Oh, Miss Peters, you should know about this. What kind of qualities do you think a doctor's wife should have? Why do you ask? Well, I uh, have this friend who's on the brink of going steady with a doctor. Well, a doctor's wife should be the kind of woman who can get along with two hours sleep, doesn't mind getting up in the middle of the night to fix a pot of coffee, and doesn't get drunk at medical conventions. <laughs> so long since I've seen you. I just left you half an hour ago. Oh, was it that recently? Well, uh, as long as I'm here, I just thought I'd mention something in passing that may interest you. I don't drink. Well, I'll make a note to the dietitian not to put any martinis on your tray. <laughs> oh. Is that your sailboat? Yeah, I just made an offer for her. Isn't she a beauty? She? Well, nautically speaking. She's a little small, but she's as trim as they come. 
As a matter of fact, I was showing them to your father. Oh. Something wrong? My heart, it just stopped beating. Excuse me. Drop in and see how you were. Where is he? Who? Who do you think? Dr. Morgan. Oh. Oh, him who? Uh, he's uh, around. Oh, we're dying to meet him. Oh, well, uh, he was just called out on an emergency in Flatbush. You just said he was around. Oh, well, that is, that's it. He is around in Flatbush trying to find the emergency. Uh, Dr. Morgan. Yes, Miss Pete. Dr. Morgan? He's just too groovy. Oh, Patty, you must look a terrible accident. Where? <laughs> calling Dr. Paisley. He's calling Dr. Paisley. I'll get this one, Joe. You get room 203. <laughs> Hello, little lady. <laughs> you know something? We're going to have that little old gallbladder of yours out in no time at all. <laughs> gallbladder? I already have my gallbladder out. Now, little pussycat, who knows better, you or the doctor? Oh, but I really don't. It's all right. I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you this. A lot of people get along just swell without a gallbladder. Oh, but it's a mistake. I keep telling you it's a terrible mistake. Yeah, well, they'll be ready for you in a few minutes. Please. Relax, Pussycat. Relax. Check it out and call me back. Dr. Morgan? Yes? I'm Richard Harrison, Patty's friend. Oh, sure. Hello, Richard. What can I do for you? Sit down. I'll stand. <laughs> I'm here to lay my cards on the table. <laughs> what? Lay my cards on the table? Face up. <laughs> oh, I know. You think I'm just a kid and you're an older man. But long before you met Patty, she was gone steady with me. Since kindergarten, if you want to get down to cases. I suppose Patty discussed this with you? Sure, that's how I found out. All I want to tell you is, don't pick up the marbles yet. I shouldn't. That's right. I'm still in a game. Richard, I didn't know about you. Patty and I haven't had time to discuss her past. So let's put it this way. The decision is up to her. 
she'll have to choose between us. And may the best man win. <laughs> Dr. Morgan. Yes, Miss Peters. You found her where? <laughs> You're back in your room. Oh, yeah. I feel like such a jerk. Well, don't think about that now. Just think about how happy we're going to be. We are? Was all that about the boat just a dream? No, I'm buying the boat. But just think of all the wonderful hours we'll spend on it together alone. Would you like that? Mm-hmm. I can see you now on the deck, the wind in your hair, salt spray on your face, and at night, the moon watching down at us. Are you happy? Happy? I'm the happiest girl in the whole world. I'd like you to rest now. Uh, I think we better go. Bye, Dr. Morgan. Oh, how can I ever thank you, Doctor? By taking a nap. I want you to get plenty of rest before the operation tomorrow. Okay. But you know what you just did? You saved my reputation. Reputation? As the biggest liar in Brooklyn Heights High School. <laughs> Boy, what am I going to tell the kids when I get back to school? Well, I imagine a girl as talented as you could think of something. Well, why don't you tell them you dumped me? Mm-mm. They've seen you. Well, you could tell them, uh... I've got it. The letter. What letter? The letter from Dr. Schweitzer inviting you to come to his jungle hospital and work with him. <laughs> What did I have? I couldn't keep you from dedicating your life to such a worthy cause. So I decided to be noble and give you up to the world. We discussed it like intelligent, sophisticated, civilized people and came to the only conclusion possible. That each of us must go on his own way, pursue his own life, knowing that a broken heart will mend in time. Afternoon, but from now on, it's purely a professional relationship. Of course, I could wait for him, but who knows when he'll get back from the jungle? <laughs> Let's face it, Ross, he's no kid now. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Ross, whatever you do, don't mention a word of this to Monica. It's just between you and me. Okay? Bye. Well, let's see what other blabbermouth I should call. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Hi, Rich. Thank you. You're beautiful. I came as soon as I heard the news. I thought I saw you going down the hall. Well, Richard, the best man won. Doc, look at it this way. There are plenty of other fish in the pool. On your way over to the jungle, you might meet a very nice girl on the boat. Well, there's a lot of spinsters that go on those cruises. The thing to do is sign up for shuffleboard, see? And oh, be sure and take a light dinner jacket. Go for that. Talk alike. 